Humans, generally speaking, have a desire for significance. We like attention because attention makes us feel special and feeling special gives us a confidence boost. So we try. We try to get attention by having an unconventional hobby or an unconventional hairstyle. But in a society where beauty standards and toxic stereotypes are so present and we feel its pressure, it's hard to still see the distinction between good ways to make yourself feel special and bad ways to make yourself feel special. And I think that one of the most toxic ways you can go about feeling special is calling yourself not like other girls. So what would we describe as the not like other girls phenomenon? Definitions differ and a right one does not exist as there are many types, categories and subcategories to this phenomenon. But we would describe a not like other girls girl as a woman who considers herself unique because she does not fit into the narrow, stereotypical view of womanhood. I think the best description of this phenomenon would be the one proposed by Gillian Flynn in her book, Gone Girl. This is how the protagonist describes her, herself and her past as the cool girl. Men always use that as their defining compliment, don't they? She's a cool girl. Being a cool girl means that I am a hot, funny, brilliant woman who adores football, poker, and dirty jokes, who plays video games, chugs beer, and jumps chili dogs into my mouth. All that while remaining a size two. Because cool girls are above all hot. Hot and understanding. Cool girls never get angry at their men. They only smile in a chagrined, loving manner. Go ahead, do whatever you want. I don't mind, I'm the cool girl. Of course, this is just one of many ways and not like other girls girl can look like. But it always comes down to the same thing. Putting yourself on a pedestal in comparison to the others simply because of differences in interests and personality. Despite the social and political progress we've made over the years, society consistently reinforces the idea that femininity is lesser than masculinity. Saying you're not like other girls to a woman is supposed to be a compliment, but <laughs> have you ever heard you're not like other guys said to a man and have them receive it as a compliment? Men are encouraged to be men because that means being tough, opinionated, intelligent, and a leader. And typically feminine traits such as sensitivity, beauty, and emotion are looked down on. Because of those associations, we look at women's and men's interests differently. Computer games, football, and cars, those are valid passions. But makeup and fashion are vain and easy. I think pop culture has a tremendous impact on how we see femininity. One of the most popular examples of vilifying femininity would be Mean Girls. Our main character is thrown into a new world after living her whole life away from Western society standards. And the girls who introduce her to femininity, girls she meets at her high school, represent vanity, hatred, stupidity. This becomes a theme in media. Femininity is associated with vanity, stupidity, shallow ambitions of high school popularity, and cruelty. Legally Blonde, which is actually one of my favorite movies of all time, depicts the problem of demonstrating femininity as inferior perfectly. Our main character has a perfect academic record. She's determined, hardworking, and very kind. But all of that is brushed aside because she's feminine, because she likes pink and she's passionate about fashion. When she wants to apply to Harvard, she hears that she isn't serious enough and is treated with contempt by everyone, including the woman, just because of her stereotypical femininity. And stereotypes in so well displayed in this movie are still very present in our society. The stereotypical pretty dumb blonde continues to affect women all around the world. Taking care of yourself is seen as vain. You can't be pretty and smart. 
Women's accomplishments are undermined. Women's opinions are invalidated and skills undermined just because they present themselves in a feminine manner. On the contrary, female protagonists who exhibit disdain for, stereoty for stereotypical femininity are considered unique. They're valued for their skills and they get a happy ending. They are often presented as one of the guys, are really good at fighting or sports or whatever else those guys around her do or like. Some may think that this is empowerment, that showing a woman as one of the guys is showing that she can be equal to them. But it's actually sending a really negative message. It tells girls that if they don't act like men, they're not as cool. They don't deserve respect. They're not equals. Not to mention that when we bash femininity, in order for the protagonist to be accepted by men, what we're really doing is we're telling our female audience that attracting men is their ultimate goal and that men's approval and acceptance is the happy ending and the equality they wished for. This is very important to me, as I myself was once and not like other girls girl. I put down other women and it made me feel better about myself. The behaviors and the habits and the stereotypes that cause me to identify that way, I'm still trying to unlearn. And thousands of girls and women are still battling their own internalized misogyny. Some not even knowing how much it affects them, their relationships and their everyday life. But one thing I know for sure is that with the right attitude, we can overcome this challenge. The first and I think the most important thing we can do is educate. The more women see the problem, the higher the chance they will realize how harmful their way of thinking is, how destructive this mindset actually is. The other thing we need to do is hold ourselves accountable. We need to monitor how we perceive other women, why we dislike them, what we assume about them, what we say behind their back. Is it really constructive criticism about their bad behavior or is it their stereotypical femininity that bothers us so much? Lastly, helping and uplifting one another. In the fight for equality, we stand a better chance, united, then divided. Sexism doesn't always come in a form of a government we can protest. Sometimes it doesn't even come from the outside, it comes from within. Internalized misogyny is not something easy to accept. Getting rid of it is hard work. But once we see the problem in ourselves, we come one big step closer to equality. Thank you.